Hey guys, back with another subscription box review today. We'll be checking out the Securico, Sakurako box for November. So Sakurico is a Japanese box, but it's not sort of the um, normal snack boxes that you usually see. It's a lot more sort of authentic Japanese. It's got a lot of cakes and teas. Um, biscuits and things like that. So let's jump in and see if we can figure out what some of this stuff is. Okay. I've got to use my book here for this one as unlike other boxes, it's not super duper clear what's what. So I think this one is our purple emo bread. Very squishy. It says here it's a fluffy sweet bread made by folding purple sweet potato into the dough. So I know this month's box is sort of focused on sweet potato and chestnut. So there's a lot of uh, sweet potato and chestnut flavoured goodies in here, which is great because the last one we got, it was had a lot of red bean paste in it, which we weren't very fond of. So hopefully today's offerings will be a little bit more to the Western palette. Not so jarring. Okay, let's have a look. What have we got next? This is our ginkgo pie. It's a Kumamoto Castle ginkgo pie. Feels really crispy like a biscuit and it's got some sugar and stuff on the outside. It says here, the flaky pastry was inspired by the beautiful ginkgo leaves made with a rich buttery pastry and ginkgo leaf powder. Okay, what have we got next? Sorry if I'm a bit slow on this, guys. I have to go through page by page for this book. Nothing's in order. Not really 100% sure what that one is at this stage. And I can't seem to find it in the book, so let's come back to that one. Okay. Oh, and of course I just found it. It is the Sweet Potato Monica. Crunchy confectionery made by sandwiching smooth sweet potato filling between two wafer cookies. They feel a little bit soft actually for wafer cookies. Okay, next up we have our sweet potato carinto. It's a sweet potato, thinly cut strips of Japanese sweet potato, deep fried into a perfect crispy texture. So it just feels like a little bag of chips, almost like the fries that we get here in Australia. The French fries, but sweet potato variant. All right. Um, we might just jump ahead and do the bowl. So we have here a spring autumn rabbit Uwan bowl. I actually thought this would be glass, but it's actually very thinnish plastic, which could be handy, but it's got some cute little bunny designs on the side. Perfect for your green tea or soups. And there should also be some Fukushima green tea in here, which is what I'm just looking for now. Of course, I'm not finding it. Ah, yeah. Fukushima green tea from Shizella, made using green tea leaves. Okay. Next we have our chestnut Ooh, Baumka Chin. It's a German style cake made by slowly adding layer of layer of batter onto a rotating spit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like little lines of cake. That looks like it's going to be pretty cool. And it's obviously chestnut flavoured. Mmm, can't wait to try that one. Okay, next up we have our Kumamoto Castle Under the Moon Chestnut Manju. These again feel quite soft, so inspired by Kumamoto Castle, we have sweet beans and chestnuts wrapped in a delicate pastry. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Beans. I don't know why Japanese seem to like beans so much. I like green beans, but not in my sweets. All right, next up we have a uh, Chestnut Manju. This is a delightful manju made in the shape of a chestnut, as well as being infused with chestnut flavour. It's a treat for fall. Confectionery is beautifully soft center, 
for a perfect seasonal indulgence. This one feels pretty firm. Not really sure what it is. I guess it's a cake with sort of chestnut in it. I guess we'll find out when we get to the tasting portion. Okay, next up we have a chestnut jelly. Japanese jellies have been a popular dessert since the 17th century. This version features big pieces of chestnut along with sweet beans. No, why the beans? Gross. Okay. Moving along. Okay, what else have we got here? Oh, this one sounds delicious. Brown sugar donuts. New style donut sticks. Made with brown sugar, these donuts are lightly fried in the center and they're soft and moist. The sugar from Okinawa is high in minerals and it has a gentle sweetness that is not overwhelming. And it has a little cute bear on the back, but you can see the picture there. Looks like long brown donuts. Be sure to check out the uh, photos in the written review after this to see exactly what was inside that packet. All right, let's keep browsing. Okay, we have our Daimaru Senbei. This lightly toasted senbei is coated in delicious layers of honey and soy sauce for the perfect combination of sweet and savory. It kind of feels like a rice cake and in the pictures in the book, it kind of looks like very similar to a rice cake. So that should be an interesting check flavors. Soy sauce and honey. We tend to do that as a savory thing here, but as we know in Japan, they love to mix it up. And what we think of as savory, they'll use in sweet. Anyhow, next up we have our black bean senbei. This fragrant black bean senbei is wonderful crunchy texture, salty snack, and flavoured with the hints of black beans and by pairing it with a roasted green tea. Now this feels like a cookie, very firm. Again with the beans, I don't, I really got to stop uh, thinking that there's not going to be beans in this box because for some reason, Japan, everything is about the bean. Okay, so next up, honey castella. Castella was introduced by Japan by the Portuguese. The sugar was very expensive and it was a luxury for many years. This handmade made version is sweetened with honey. So it looks like just a little slice of cake and a little nice honey cake. Something that I think would agree with the Western palate. So I'm pretty excited to try that one. Okay, next up we have our brown sugar bolo. This one feels a little bit soft. So it's a brown sugar cake and it gets its name from the Portuguese for cake. Perfect for dipping in tea. There's the picture in the book. Looks like a nice brown, brown, dippy kind of cake. All right, we're just about done here. Well, what have we got for our last thing? We've got a Yawaraka milk cookie. Again, this feels so soft. When they say cookie, I don't know if they mean the same thing we mean. This is so very soft feeling, but so yaraka means soft in Japanese. There you go. And perfectly describes this melt in your mouth texture of this delightfully baked cookie. Infused with rich milk flavor and white chocolate is the perfect treat for autumn. Oh wow. Okay, so it almost seems like it's a white chocolate shortbread. Very soft. Can't wait to try that one. Okay, and our very, very last item, we have another jelly. So we've got our Amanatsu Citrus Jelly. And by the look of it, no beans, so winning on this one. This refreshing flute jelly is made with orange citrus. And it's a perfect balance of sweet and tart. And it goes great with a green tea. This one actually feels kind of loose, like less of a jelly and more of a liquid. Crazy. Okay guys, well that is the Securico box for the month of November and it's called Autumn in Kyushu. I'll just give you guys a little quick look through the book. So there's a little idea of most of the stuff that comes in the box. The book's quite full of um, ideas and things you can pair stuff with and then it's also got a nice little write up of each item so you can see what the allergens are, a little photo of it. And a little write up because obviously everything's written in Japanese, so it's not super easy to tell what's what. But I'll be giving all of these a taste and giving them a written review. So if you're watching this on YouTube, click 
on the link below and head over and look at the written review to see what I thought of these flavors to see some other photos some photos with stuff unboxed and yeah we'll see you next time guys thanks for tuning in bye